If you enjoy the content on this channel, please like and subscribe. Man on the Moon is a 1999 biographical comedy drama film about the late American entertainer Andy Kaufman, starring Jim Carrey as Kaufman. The film is directed by Milos Forman and also features Danny DeVito, Courtney Love and Paul Giamatti. The story traces Kaufman's steps from childhood through to the comedy clubs and television appearances that made him famous, including his memorable appearances on Saturday Night Live, Late Night with David Letterman, the show Fridays, and his role as Latka Gravis on the sitcom Taxi, which was popular among viewers but disruptive for Kaufman's co-stars. The film pays particular attention to the various inside jokes, scams, put-ons and happenings for which Kaufman was famous, most significantly his long-running feud with wrestler Jerry the King Lawler and his portrayal of the character of the bawdy lounge singer Tony Clifton. The film was released on December 22, 1999 in the United States and on May 5, 2000 in the United Kingdom by Universal Pictures and Warner Brothers Pictures in some markets. Although the film was unsuccessful commercially and received mixed reviews, Carey received critical acclaim for his performance and won a Golden Globe, his second in a row after his award for The Truman Show. His win was in the musical or comedy category. A documentary, Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond, was released in 2017 and chronicles Carey's performance as Kaufman in the film a performance he maintained during much of the film's production. Danny DeVito in the movie plays George Shapiro, who is an American talent manager and television producer. He was one of the most successful managers in show business in the United States, best known for representing Jerry Seinfeld, Carl Reiner, and of course, Andy Kaufman. He also served as a producer on the sitcom Seinfeld. Several members of the cast of Taxi, including Marlon Henner, Judd Hirsch, Christopher Lloyd, Carol Kane, and Jeff Conaway, make cameos playing themselves. Danny DeVito was also in the cast of Taxi and co-stars in the film but does not appear as himself. Many of Kaufman's other real-life friends and co-stars also appear in the film, including Bob Samuda, George Shapiro, who don't appear as themselves, whereas David Letterman, Paul Schaefer, professional wrestler Jerry Lawler, wrestling announcers Jim Ross and Lance Russell, the improv founder Bud Friedman, Saturday at Live creator Lorne Michaels, and actor Vincent Chevelli and Chad Wilson also appear. Michael Richards is played by Maul MacDonald in a recreation of the Friday's show skit. According to Jerry Lawler's autobiography, It's Good to Be the King, sometimes, WCW wrestler Glenn Gilberti, better known to wrestling fans as Disco Inferno, was also considered for the role of Lawler in the film. Kevin Spacey, Edward Norton, Nicolas Cage, John Cusack and Hank Azaria all auditioned for the role of Andy Kaufman. Man on the Moon was shot in Los Angeles in the winter of 1998. The film's production is notable for Carrie's rigid method acting, staying in character as Kaufman both on and off the set for the duration of the production. Carrie's adherence to the role reached the extent where he would develop an unscripted tics and habits that were previously characteristic of Kaufman himself. Among other examples, Courtney Love noted how Carrie would stuff his clothing with Limburger cheese on the set when playing Kaufman's Tony Clifton character in the film, something Kaufman had done in his own performances of the character. A documentary, Jim and Andy the Great Beyond, was released in November of 2017 using behind-scenes footage. The documentary covers the production of Man on the Moon with particular focus on Carrie's overwrought method acting as Kaufman. The soundtrack for the film is written by rock band R.E.M., whose 1992 song Man on the Moon, originally written in honour of Kaufman, gave the film its title. The soundtrack also included the Grammy-nominated song The Great Beyond, which remains the band's highest charting single in the United Kingdom. The film, however, makes a few changes to Kaufman's life story. As Kaufman, played here by Carrie, explains in the film's prologue, all the most important things in my life were changed around and mixed up for dramatic purposes. The famous Carnegie Hall Milk and Cookies performance, portrayed in the film as one of his last performances after being diagnosed with cancer, had in fact occurred in 1979, five years before Kaufman's death and well before his diagnosis. Also, the film is deliberately ambiguous over whether Kaufman actually died or if this was just a hoax as some fans still believe. The film implies that Carol Kane was the member of Taxi cast during the show's first season, which in real life was in 1978 and 1979. In actuality, Kane did not make her first appearance in the series until the episode Guess Who's Coming for Brenfish, which first aired on ABC in January 1980 during the show's second season. The film implies that Taxi was cancelled only once, however the show went on for one more season on NBC. Other inaccuracies include scenes supposedly drawn from SNL, specifically the first episode host who is depicted as having been Richard Belzer, but it was actually George Carlin in real life. Belzer also erroneously refers to the show as Saturday Night Live during the sequence, but that title wasn't adopted until season two. The scene where Lorne Michaels asks home viewers audience to vote Kaufman on the show happened in 1982, two years after Michaels left the show as executive producer and Dick Ebersole took over. After its release, the film attracted some criticism over various events in Kaufman's life, that were left out, 
Max Allen Collins maintained the filmmakers did not understand Kaufman and that the film does not give Kaufman the credit for his genius and that he had a complete intellectual grasp of what it is up to and the showman's instincts for how to play an audience. Significantly, these critics include Kaufman's own father Stanley, who was displeased that only a little of Andy's early life, before his career took off, was portrayed. Sam Simon, season 5 writer on Taxi, stated in a 2013 interview with Mark Maron that the portrayal of Andy on the show was a complete fiction and that Kaufman was completely professional and that he told you Tony Clifton was him. Simon also stated that sources of these stories were mostly from Bob Sermoda and a little bit of press and hype, but conceded that Kaufman would have loved Sermoda's version of events. Ivan 2020 Screen Rant journalist Kaylee Mosley backed claims that Kaufman was sometimes difficult to work with while he was on taxi and noted that he would only work two times a week on set, in contrast to the five days a week the other cast members were working. Kaufman was also reluctant to work on the sitcom and was allowed to appear in only 14 episodes per season as part of his deal with the show's executives. As of 2020, occasional taxi actress Carol Kane was the only taxi cast member to acknowledge attending his funeral. Now, to say Andy Kaufman was a unique and controversial comic would be an understatement. His kind of humour was very offbeat and maybe ahead of its time, but it's the kind of humour that really appeals to me. And Jim Carrey's performance in Man in the Moon is absolutely fantastic. He brings a depth of dedication in capturing the essence of Andy Kaufman perfectly. Carrey's portrayal goes beyond mere imitation and delves into the psychological complexity of Kaufman's character, capturing both his comedic brilliance and his enigmatic personality. Albeit a bit rushed, the film, I feel, effectively portrays Kaufman's various stages of life, from his early stand-up comedy days to his controversial stunts and eventual final battle with cancer. The rest of the cast are strong as well, with Danny DeVito as George Shapiro and Paul Giamatti as Bob Sameda. I do find that Courtney Love is completely miscast here as Lynn Magalis, Andy's love interest. And once again, it's superb direction here from the fantastic Millis Foreman, who successfully captures the eccentricities of Kaufman's performances and the overall tone of his life and times. One of the aspects that sets Man and Moon apart is its approach to blurring the lines between reality and performance. Andy Kaufman was known for pushing the boundaries and playing pranks on his audience, and the film reflects this aspect of often leaving viewers uncertain about what was genuine and what was part of the act. The one thing I will criticize is maybe the film's pacing and for not delving deeper into some aspects of Kaufman's life. But for me, I found this to be a fascinating film. I've done a lot of reading about Andy Kaufman already, so I knew a lot of what was in the film, particularly his long-running feud with Jerry the King Lawler, in the Memphis wrestling scene, and that Kaufman was really dedicated to making wrestling believable. For me, this is a compelling biographical drama that pays tribute to an enigmatic and boundary-pushing comedian. Jim Carrey's transformative performance is a standout element, and the film provides an intriguing glimpse into Kaufman's world of comedy and controversy, yet he's also sublime genius. Whether you're a fan of Kaufman's work or simply just interested in the world of unconventional comedy, Man on the Moon, with its fantastic performance here, particularly from Jim Carrey, is definitely a film not to give a miss. Man on the Moon gets a 9 out of 10.